Welcome back to Wiggly Pups. Today we are going to be continuing our training with Louie, the Weimaraner puppy, and we're going to be working outside here, seeing if we can't get him to heal. There are two reasons why I think it's important that a dog learns how to have a good heal. The first of which being, it makes the walk more enjoyable. I mean, nobody wants to be pulled all over the place by their dog, chasing after squirrels, people, other dogs, you name it. But secondly, and probably more importantly in my mind, you wanna be able to get after your dog both physically and mentally when it comes to exercising them. So the more focus we can get outside, the more he's gonna actually be exhausted by the time he gets back inside, which is ultimately one of the goals of taking them on a walk. We wanna be able to expend as much energy as possible so that we can have a quiet evening when we get home. We're gonna bring him out here. We're gonna zigzag around. I'll talk you through exactly what and why I'm doing and we'll move on from there. Thanks for stopping by. Go. All right. So we got Louie out here and we're gonna start teaching him how to heal. I'm gonna practice just, yes, a couple little eye contacts just to get his brain into a training mode. And then we'll move on from there. Now, as you'll see, I'm still using boiled chicken as I have in the past. Yes, good boy. And I'm just ripping off very tiny little pieces because to him, they're just as great as getting a full piece. The only difference is now I can treat him. Yes, good boy, a hundred times. All right, so let's get rolling here. Yes. Now what I'm gonna be doing as I'm going around here, if he goes to the full extent of the leash, yes sir, good boy, I'm just gonna stop. And when he comes back, yes, good boy, I'm gonna give him a treat. And the reason I'm doing this, yes, good boy. See, I'm trying to hold his attention as I go, but the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to set up a rewardable zone right here on the side. Yes, good boy. Now, one thing you will notice is that I'm not going to be using his name very often so much as little cues. Yes, good boy. To show him that I'm changing directions. Yes, good boy. Now, the reason I keep changing directions is because it creates more and more opportunities. Yes, for him to catch up into this spot. If I was just walking in a straight line, he would forever be in front of me and I would never be able to reward him like I want to. Yes. Now, as I make inside turns, you'll see that I'm actually holding the treat behind me a little bit to slow him down and keep him from jumping out in front. Yes, good boy. There, see right there. Got his attention, didn't catch him at the end of the leash. Uh, this leash, by the way, is one of my Wiggly Pups leashes. It's just a four inch, or I'm sorry, a four foot, uh, three quarter inch wide. What if I do this? Yes, good boy. Let's keep going. Uh, four foot, three quarter inch wide leash. Just a slip lead like you would find at a groomer or at a vet hospital. The reason I like them, will you do it? Yes, good boy. Good job. Okay. The reason I like to use these is because for one, if you're trying to train a dog how to heal, there's no reason to give them enough space to where they can get six, eight, 12 feet away. Yes, sir. So much as you want them to stay pretty close, but you'll notice that I'm actually not using leash tension unless he goes to the far extent of the leash and I just stop. I'll get his attention and he comes back. Yes. Good boy. Let's see if we can do an inside turn. Yes, good job. So he gets a little ahead of me and he comes this way. Now, as I was saying, the other reason I like these leashes is it takes up very little real estate in my hand. I'm actually just using my ring finger and my pinky to hold on to it so that I can use my other three fingers to give treats to him. Yes, good boy. Let's keep going. Who's such a good dog? You are Mr. Louie Maine. And he's getting a little ahead of me. So I'll try and lure him back this way. Yes, sir. There you go. I know there's so much that could be grabbing your attention right now. Thank goodness I brought chicken. 
So he's getting a little fast. So I'll stop and try and get his attention and reward him when he gets back to me. Yes. Let's go this way. Yes, good boy. Yes, sir. Once again, you saw he was getting a little ahead of me, so I decided to create an opportunity for him to catch up. See, he was ahead, now he's behind. Yes, sir, good boy. When he catches up, that's when I get to reward him. Come on. The hardest part about teaching a dog how to heal is honestly, it's the human side of things. It's learning this dance that looks pretty easy because I've been doing it for a long time, but being able to maintain the correct relationship spatially between you and the dog, let's leave that alone, good boy, is something that takes a little practice because in the beginning, you're gonna get a little tangled up. Yes, now I'm gonna give him a few. Good boy, because there's a cat right over there that he's ignoring, come on. Who's a good boy? Yes. We got someone walking by too. Yes, good boy. Now you notice that I am talking, yes, almost constantly to him, and I'm looking down a lot. It's part of the reason why I like to practice in a wide open space is because I've run into a lot of things in the time that I've been training that I didn't need to, but my head was down and just poof, right in the face. So I'm trying to avoid that or at least minimize the risk. Yes, good boy. Now let's see if we can get him to do a stop. You ready? Stop. Yes, good boy, that was great. Okay, let's keep going. Let's do an inside turn. Yes very easy to fall into the habit while training heel of yes just turning with your dog on the outside like this and that's easy because it's easy to stay ahead of him as long as I turn tighter than he does he's forever behind me but the real money is the inside turn yes because it means that they are managing their space and their pace in relation to you yes see how he's just kind of pivoting as I walk around him. Good boy. You're doing great. This way. Now as he's getting better, I'm going to start doing things like mixing up how fast I move. Oh, yes, good boy. Yes, good job. Because I want it to be forever challenging to him to keep up with me. Good boy. You'll note that I am always trying to keep the leash nice and loose. Here you go. Yes, good sir. Come on. Oh, going real slow. Whoa, you're walking real crazy, bro. I know, right? Here we go. Back to a normal pace. Yes, good boy. Now, of course, right now, I'm really raining down treats. I'm doing it a lot. But as he improves, I'm gonna start keeping in mind how many steps have we taken and how far have we gone so that I can start to space it out. I don't want the walk to be something where you're forever passing food down, but rather you space it out until eventually you go for a walk and you get a treat when you get home. Yes, good boy. Good job. Let's go this way. And then we'll do a real fast inside turn like this. Yeah. What a good boy. You're doing such a great job, Lou. Yes, sir. There you go. Now let's turn this way. Fake out. We're going to go this way. Yes. Good job. Now again, my goal is to be as relaxed as possible. I think that helps communicate down to him. And it also is part of the reward that if he goes to full tension on the leash, that's not as comfortable or rewarding as being next to me where it's nice and loose. Yes, sir. And also when it's loose, hey, there's that cat again. I know, I see him too. <gasps> Who's a good boy for ignoring him though? Who's showing so much focus right now? But keep it loose. 
That means he's also in the reward zone where he gets chicken and who doesn't want that? Yes, sir. Come on. Now what you'll find is in practicing heel that you can just be out here for 15 minutes or so, maybe 20 minutes. And if you're holding, yes, his focus like this, he's gonna be knocked out more than he would be if you went on a two mile walk. The reason being, as we have discovered in the last episode, yes, it's the mental energy. It's here in the noggin. That's what wears him out. So we're forever chasing that, trying to get him mentally exhausted because the body is gonna follow. Yes, good boy. Oh, I heard Vanilla. You did too, huh? Who's a good boy? Yes, good job. So as we progress with this, we're gonna try and figure out how do we know if he's improving? And the way that you do that, excuse me, sorry buddy, is you start taking straightaways. You see, okay, of course I can zigzag around and get him to follow me because where else is he gonna go? But that's not organic. That's not the way that we walk when we take our dogs for a walk, but rather we wanna be able to walk in a straight line. So what I'll start doing is saying, okay, if, at least you spun around, there we go. You know, if I'm on this scene here, can I get to the next scene with him walking in a straight line, not getting ahead of me, keeping pace? Let's find out. Yes, good boy. Of course, I'm gonna reward him as we go. He's picking up a little. Yes, good boy. So he's a little wide, but that's okay. So we kind of got here, but it, you know, certainly not a plus work, but we'll get there. I know you want to pick up the pace, but you'll see this is exactly why I say you can't outwalk the kid unless you get his brain involved. Yes, good boy. Because physically, he'll outwalk us all. There's no way. Can you? Yes, good boy. I always like to check in with some of the other skills we've been working on. Come in. For instance, that eye contact that we did last time. Yes, good boy. Always good to make sure that he can do that. Now we have someone walking through, so I'm gonna move off to the side and try and maintain his attention while that person passes. Yes. Yes, good job. And that's a perfect example of when you're out on a walk, you're gonna have people that are gonna pass you, whether it's same side of the street, other side of the street, yes, sir. And one of the best things you can do in the beginning is just stop and see if you can maintain their focus. Draw from that first lesson we had and get them to be having eye contact, yes, as people pass. One thing I'll also do, because obviously I want them to learn how to respond to a dog passing, not just ignore like they have blinders on. So as people pass, I'll say, hey, look, look over there and then look at me. And I'm trying to propagate the idea that when they see someone, they should check in with me and be like, hey, did you see that dog over there? And then they'll be rewarded for it. Yes, instead of acting upon it, I'm actually designing the nature of how they react to other people passing. Yes. You're being such a good boy right now, Lou. Thank you. What do you think of the chicken? It's basic. I would do anything for it. Yes. Good boy. Glad to hear that. I boiled it myself. Yes. Now, it sounds insane, but I encourage you to talk as you're walking. It's a great way to keep their focus. Yes, you can tell them about your day. You can recite the numbers of pie recipes, pie recipes. You can do whatever you want. The idea is the more that you talk to them, yes, the more attractive a prospect you are to follow while outside amongst all these amazing distractions. 
We have cats, bunnies, moving leaves, all sorts of stuff, people passing by, but I'm able to hold this distraction, yes, or keep him from distraction with this chicken and my incessant blabbermouth. Yes, here we go. Boy, what do you think, Lou? Let's go this way. Let's try another straightaway, shall we? Yes, and you can already see his pacing is actually slowing down because he's getting tired, I can tell. Yes, good boy. This way. Good job. So right as I was about to lose him there, I turn. Perfect example right there, boom. I don't have to stop, I don't have to say anything negative, yes. All I do is just wait for him to come back, try and give him a little audible cue that he returns this focus to me. What do you think, buddy? You're doing a great job. Healing like a champ for round one, I'll tell you that right now. Let's go this way. Now, obviously we're gonna be doing straight lines as he improves, but the other thing is I want you to start, yes, looking up. Try to get a sense for where your dog is without having to stare at him like this. Especially if you have hair that gets in your face the whole time like mine does. Good boy. The closer we can get to simulating an actual walk, the better. Nice and loose. Just got one hand on the leash here, two fingers. And I am not squeezing tight, I'll tell you what. He gets a little far. No pulling. Yes. All I'm doing is just keeping him from going further. I'm not using the leash to manipulate, manipulate where he is so much as just to give a max distance from me that he can be. Who's a good boy? Who looks kind of tired. Now, for those who may seem concerned because he's getting a little panty, He's just tired. It's only about 65, a beautiful sunny day here in Colorado. I'm gonna let another car pass here. Yes. But certainly not too hot for the boy. When I first started training, I trained down in Georgia and I still have the habit of putting my hand on the pavement to check to see if it's too hot for their pads. Has yet to happen here in Colorado. I'm about out of chicken. Yes. You're doing such a great job, Lou. Yes, good boy. Yes, good job. We're winding down to the last couple bits here. So what I'm gonna do is bring him to a full stop and we'll cut it off. Ready? Yes. Let's do one eye contact, last bit. Yes, good boy. You wanna lick them off? Clean me down. Thank you. So that in a nutshell is how I begin training heel. It starts with zigzagging around, trying to have a lot of audible cues, coaching them to focus on you, even though there's so much else going on around here. And once you start feeling pretty confident, both in your ability to juggle these different aspects of healing, but also in their ability to focus on you, start taking straightaways. See if you can get from driveway to driveway. See if you can get to the end of the block. Whatever it is that you can use as a metric for progress, the better. And beyond that, it's practice makes perfect. Like I said, I recommend 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and I also would say that it's best to kind of stay in front of your house so that if you find yourself getting too taxed and you want to just be done, you don't find yourself two miles off in the wrong direction and now you're going to have a nightmare of a return walk home. What do you say, Lou? We'll try again later, huh? That's it for today's lesson. Glad you came by. Hope it was helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you've tried this or if you have another method that you like to use to teach your dog how to heal. As always, I appreciate a like. Those help me the most. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do that to get more of this Wiggly Pups training sessions that we're doing with Louie the Weimariner. Hope you had a good time. See you later.